All right, uh, today's lesson is on allotropes. This one is a little bit shorter than other lessons in this unit, um, but let's get started. So objectives, pause and peruse if you so wish. All right, so remember this flow chart for matter. Matter is anything that has mass and volume. It's broken into two main categories, pure substances and mixtures. Mixtures are homogeneous, evenly mixed, the particles are evenly distributed. Heterogeneous, not evenly mixed, the particles are not evenly distributed. And then pure substances, uh, one um, type of matter, and they have definite properties and broken into either elements or compounds. And allotropes fit within that category of elements. <clears throat> so an element is a pure substance that contains only one kind of atom, so same number of protons. Um, they have unique chemical and physical properties. Um, they have a unique chemical symbol. Some are monatomic, like single atoms like helium. Some are diatomic, so that's two atoms that are bonded. And that is um, hydrogen and then that little <clears throat> going across NOF and then all the way down group 17. Okay, now we get to allotropes, today's topic. So allotropes are different molecular forms of an element. And this may sound similar to a word that we've addressed before, which is isotopes. Isotopes are atoms of the same element that have the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. Allotropes, on the other hand, um, have different properties. They have completely different structures, um, and those different structures give them different properties. This is something important to remember for later on. When um, elements have different structures, they have different properties. So um, some common elements that have allotropes are oxygen, carbon, phosphorus, sulfur, and tin. So let's look at some of them. All right, let's go past this. All right, so we have oxygen. Oxygen can exist as O2, that's oxygen gas. It's colorless, it's odorless, it's essential for most forms of life. And then we have O3, it's ozone. It's toxic, it's pale blue in terms of a gas. It has a sharp odor. And you can smell it sometimes after lightning because that is causing the oxygen gas to get converted into ozone. So that rain smell after a thunderstorm is probably just ozone. Then we have carbon. Carbon has a lot of allotropes. The two most common ones that are referred to are graphite and diamond. Graphite is what's used in pencils. It's the lead of pencils. It's soft, it's black, it conducts electricity. Diamond, on the other hand, hardest mineral on earth. It's transparent and it does not conduct electricity. But they're both made exclusively of carbon. So that's important to remember. Oxygen, O2 is pure oxygen. O3, ozone, is pure oxygen. Different structures, different properties. Graphite, pure carbon. Diamond, pure carbon. Different structures, different properties. Phosphorus, um, three main types, white, red, and black. Uh, white phosphorus is volatile, okay? Spontaneously bursts into flame, okay? Black is a crystalline solid non-reactive with air, red phosphorus or red powder, non-reactive with air. You can see the differences in their melting points here. So again, allotropes, they're all phosphorus. They don't contain other um, atoms of different elements, but you can see their structures are different. So look at the structure of white phosphorus compared to the structure of red phosphorus compared to the structure of black phosphorus. Different structures lead to different properties. That's allotropes. We have tin. There's white tin right here. More common, it's malleable. And then we have gray tin. It's a brittle solid. It's powdery. It falls apart easily. And then we have sulfur, which has a giant range, a lot actually. So there are solid types. There are also gaseous sulfur allotropes. But this one, um, uh, the rhombic and the monoclinic, those are kind of the most common um, in terms of ones that you will see exposure to. Um, and the rhombic is um, stable, but it is just a temperature difference. So go above 369 Kelvin, and we have um, this spiky needle-like version. And then we go below it, and we have this um, octahedron kind of shape. Okay, But there are other forms or allotropes of sulfur. 
So what are the two types of pure substances? Do you remember? Elements and compounds. Those are the two kinds of pure substances. What are, why are graphite and diamond considered allotropes? Well, they're both the same element carbon, but they have different properties, right? So allotropes are the same element, different structures, different properties. Okay, graphite and diamond, both carbon, same element, different structures, different properties. You can see graphite is kind of arranged in like sheets. What are the two allotropes of oxygen? We have oxygen gas and then we have ozone gas, right? So ozone is made as lightning passes through the air and that kind of creates that smell that you might smell after a thunder and lightning storm. Which allotrope of tin is more stable? Um, that's white tin, okay? And there you have it. We might do a blue in glass, but that's it. That's allotropes. Again, this is a little bit of a shorter lesson and hopefully you have learned so much about the periodic table and hopefully today you did learn something new.